weekly press briefing um, to give an update of what's going on here in Cole County. Um, the, our case numbers have been lower and our hospitalizations have been lower, so we're really happy to see that. And we attribute that to the preventative measures that everyone in our community is taking, and we're very appreciative of that. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions about vaccines, so we're going to uh, jump straight into that. And Dr. Haight from Capital Region Medical Center is going to start that discussion off. Dr. Haight. Hello, everyone. Um, to begin with, I appreciate everyone's um, patience during this time. As we all know, um, it was just a week ago that the governor um, addressed how we were going to proceed with phase 1B, tier 1, and tier 2. And so it has been for all of our organizations uh, across our region um, to adjust and adapt and be able to um, start taking names. And so I just wanted to share that, again, if people are making calls to their um, primary care physician or to their um, personal physician, um, many of the offices right now are inundated with calls and then calls back and multiple things back and forth. And so we're doing our best to be able to take down names. Um, if that does not happen, I will tell you that our region um, between the County Health Department, JCMG, Community Health Center, St. Mary's, as we hear from others that that is happening, we're alerting each other so we can address those within our clinic. Um, but to be helpful for all of us, the, I think the first thing um, to realize is, are you a, in the phase 1B tier 2? And are the high risk patients that the governor is allowing us to go ahead and vaccinate? If you do not fall into that either phase 1B tier 1 or tier 2, um, then you would not qualify for a vaccine yet. Um, so again, just roughly speaking, um, and you can go to um, the website Mo Stop COVID. So that's M O S T O P C O V I D dot com. There's an excellent website that lists all of this information. But those at a high risk or anyone who's 65 and older, any adults with cancer, chronic kidney disease, COPD, heart conditions, weakened immune system due to organ transplant. Severe obesity, which means your BMI or body mass index is greater than 40. Pregnancy, sickle cell disease, type 2 diabetes mellitus, and then those individuals with intellectual and or developmental disabilities, such as Down syndrome. And so after you determine that you're high risk, we would like you to contact your physician, your personal physician, primary care physician, um, for some of our patients, um, their specialist, like their nephrologist or kidney doctor, really provides their primary care. We would like you to call their office um, and um, be put on a list. Because we are having so many calls, we are finding that people are leaving message. And again, if you give us time to get all of these messages, and then we can verify with you that you are on the list, but we are having some patients who are calling three to four times in an hour and leaving messages. And again, that's making it difficult for all of us trying to make sure that we're getting everyone on the list who needs to. So again, um, I, I encourage everyone to take a deep breath. We're gonna get through this. And um, again, give your uh, physician and their staff time to be able to um, get people on the list and get back to you. Um, I know other offices are trying to do electronic signups. And again, many of these things that we're doing are new. And so again, have patience as we're working through all of these things to try to help as many people as we can. Um, then as a vaccine becomes available, the offices, if you are on that list, are going down lists um, and then contacting you um, for the vaccine. And so if you have not been called, um, but you are on the list, you have been verified on the list, then um, again, please be patient. Um, on the capital region side, we started vaccinating um, the tier two 1B um, patients. We had clinics Monday, Tuesday, and we're going to do a large amount tomorrow and Saturday. And, this, and these are based on the calls that we had previously received. 
We continue to make lists. We only had 1,400 vaccine doses available to give. As you can imagine, um, I know that Capital Region alone has over 18,000 patients who are 65 and older, and four to 5,000 more who, who are less than 65 who fit these criteria. So again, as you can imagine, um, there's a large number of patients who are trying to call us. We certainly understand we want to give as many vaccines as we can, but we are limited due to the amount of doses um, that we receive. Again, the state of Missouri is doing the best that they can with the distribution of vaccines that they are able to receive from the federal government. So again, I hope that's been helpful on how we are approaching it at Capital Region. Again, if you're having difficulties, I apologize but we are working um, to uh, remedy all of those situations as we know about them. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. <laughs> Dr. Adams, would you like to give uh, an update from SSM St. Mary's? Sure, I agree with um, what Dr. Haight said. So um, if you wanna get a vaccine and you are a patient who has who's an SSM patient because you get your primary care with SSM or you get some other regular care with SSM, what you need to do is call your primary care clinic um, and get on the wait list to get a, an appointment to be vaccinated. So we are currently vaccinating. All of our appointments are currently full. Um, we also are limited by the amount of vaccine that the government has given us, but we are calling the people on our wait list and getting you scheduled as quickly as we can as more vaccine becomes available. So, and one thing I've heard is that some people are calling around all the healthcare entities in town and getting on everybody's wait list. And I just want you to realize that that really com com makes it more complicated for us from a logistics point of view. The other thing we're worried about is when we open one of those vials of vaccine and there's about six doses in there, we have to use that up within a certain amount of time or it goes bad. And so we have to be very careful to make sure we get everybody scheduled and we want them to show up when they said they're gonna show up so if you're on, if you've been vaccinated elsewhere, but you were um, called in to come get your vaccine and you don't show up because you already got it from somebody else, then we're scrambling to make sure we have a patient to give that vaccine to because we don't want to waste it. It's a very precious resource and we don't have a lot of it. So keep that in mind. I know there's so many things to think about, but um, just those are the type of things that we're trying to navigate in this really unprecedented um, situation where we have to vaccinate an entire region of Missouri. So the other thing I wanted to just briefly touch on, actually, if Christy, if you could come back to me after we talk about vaccinations, um, I want to talk about post COVID syndrome just real briefly. Sure. Well, yeah. let's come back to you, Dr. Adams. Thank you. Dr. Sullivan, do you want to give an update from the Community Health Center of Central Missouri? Yeah, and I think I, I would echo what Dr. Haight and Dr. Adams both said. Um, for our patients, Community Health Center that fall into the phase one, B, tier one, and two categories, they should call our main number. We have one central number to call, um, 573 632 2777. That's for all of our patients, regardless of which clinic they go to. Just call the main number. Um, and then our staff will get you added to the waiting list. And then you will be contacted to schedule an appointment when your vaccine is available. We're also working on implementing an online scheduling op option. Um, at that, this point in time, that is not available. But when it is available, we will let everybody know. Um, like I said, just be patient, like Dr. Hayden, and Dr. Adams said, just be patient because we definitely have a lot of patients to get through and, and not enough vaccines at this point in time. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan. Ron from JCMG. Ron, you're on mute. Sorry, thank you, Christy. I thought I'd unmuted myself. Just reiterating what Dr. Hay, Dr. Adams, and Dr. Sullivan mentioned earlier, uh, JCMG started vaccinating uh, today. We've got uh, 168 patients plus that we're doing until 4 o'clock today. We have another clinic tomorrow. Those are patients that were able to self-schedule online. Uh, we do have a website set up at jcmg.org forward slash COVID, where a JCMG established patient, either through primary care or through a specialist, is able to go ahead and either book an appointment if we have them available. If we don't have appointments available, then there is a communication list in which they can sign up for to be contacted once we have additional vaccine. 
similar constraints to the other healthcare facilities in terms of being able to obtain that from the state of Missouri. For patients that don't have internet access or don't have a way to sign up on the web, they're welcome to call into the JCMG offices. We're asking that they contact their primary care physician or again, or the specialist that they primarily see here and staff will be able to assist them in getting on that communications list. What we're doing is we're trying to then take approximately half of our online appointments um, and dedicate those for patients, again, that have limited internet capabilities, placing phone calls to them so that we can actually get them on the list to be immunized, and then allowing the other half of those appointments for patients to book those online. Um, that's our strategy uh, to this point. Um, I would like to just stress um, that if this is gonna be a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, I think some people think that this is just, you know, a couple of weeks we have to get through and, and then we'll be okay. And, and I'd like just to, to, just to mention again, this is, this is gonna be a several month process and, uh, we, we want to see everyone get vaccinated. We just have to uh, get the vaccine, get the staff in place, and, and we will get it to you. Thank you, Ron. That's what we've been trying to stress here. It's it's prevention and it's patience. We need to keep doing all those things that we've been doing to prevent and slow the spread of COVID, but also be patient because it's going to take a while to vaccinate um, everyone who wants it. So here at the Cole County Health Department, we have been working collaboratively with the hospitals we have not been able to order a vaccine yet, but we have had it redistributed to us from the hospitals and we're so thankful for that because we've been able to help vaccinate the phase 1A, the healthcare workers, the EMS, EMT, paramedics. And then we're also um, starting, we're working with the phase 1B tier one, which is those first responders and law enforcement in uh, federal agencies and emergency services. And then when we have, if we have extra vaccine and we have appointment times, we've also started some tier one here or tier two here as well, phase one B tier two. Uh, but we, what we would like to back, um, emphasize to everyone is you do have to have an appointment because as Dr. Adams explained, the increments with those doses is very important. It's not like the flu shots where we can just go get another one out of the fridge. There's a certain number with of doses in that vial and we have to use them in a certain amount of time and it, it's very time sensitive in it, and we have to have appointments for that. So you cannot just come to the health department and demand vaccine. You have to have an appointment. And we're also in the process of implementing an online scheduling system, but it's just not there yet. So we are working through that list of over 7,000 people that registered through our survey, and we're calling and we're making appointments. And at this time, if you want to get added to the list, um, you can call and we can add you to the list but we would just ask for everyone to be patient. And the first thing you need to do is call your doctor's office and get on their list. And even if they're full this week, you should uh, wait for them to call you. Uh, we are trying to serve those um, other agencies and we're trying to serve those who do not have a doctor. Uh, we would like you to go through your doctor first because they know you, they know your medical history and uh, we want them to get that vaccine through you. So. Um, Doctor, that's all I had about vaccines. Dr. Adams, your turn again. Thanks, Christy. I wanted to talk a little bit about post COVID syndrome. I think everybody's heard about acute COVID and that's really where all the attention has been placed um, thus far. You know, we talk about the people who are have the acute illness. They just developed COVID. Um, maybe they're seeking emergency care. Maybe they're needing to be hospitalized, but they're there is not very much being said about the post COVID syndrome. More than a third of patients suffer from long-term symptoms after having COVID. And these symptoms can persist even after 12 weeks. And most commonly things like fatigue, shortness of breath, cough, or chest pain. And if you're a person who's having long-term symptoms after having COVID, it's really important that you seek care with your primary care physician um, and they may, may even refer you to a specialist, depending on what's going on. But this is something that really needs to be checked out to make sure that there's nothing else going on. You might need to have some labs done. You might need to have some x-rays done. But if you're having long-term symptoms or any kind of new symptoms after having COVID, you need to engage your healthcare provider and make sure that you're okay and get you back on the path to health. Thank you so much for that. Um, Sam, do you have an update for us from the county perspective? Yeah, first, I want to thank, I'll tell you what, I have been so impressed with, with our network here where everybody's working together. So it's, it's 
I just can't thank you enough. But my excitement right now is our boxes are here and they are going out. And Mike Lester showed me his already. And uh, I think we got two shipments in yesterday. We've got shipments coming in today and tomorrow. And I think some on Saturday. So all of the citizens of Polk County need to kind of be looking for the box. And, you know, the, it's these aren't just plain masks. These are a surgical grade mask that's it's not an N95, but it's it's much, much better than than these masks that we're we're wearing now. And so, you know, if you don't want the box, the county would like to have them back because we can use these masks and there's hand sanitizer as well. And uh, but I'm just excited that they're finally coming out and everything is made in America. And uh, it's, you know, COVID's not going to go away anytime soon. So I think you can use the mask. You can use the sanitizer. We have directions from the health department on COVID. So, uh, you know, just just look for them. And again, thank you, everybody, because this is a great group. Thank you, Sam. And yeah, if someone does receive a box and they don't want them, please feel free to drop them off at the health department. We'll work with agencies uh, for those people who might not have received one, like Salvation Army and United Way. We'll make sure the masks and the sanitizer gets to those who can who can use them. So please don't throw them away. Uh, Mayor Turgeon, do you have anything to offer from the city? Thank you. Just want to reiterate to use prevention, take precautions, and have patience. Also remind that there is still a city and county advisory in place, and those key points include if you're sick, stay home. Keep your distance and space out. Wear your mask. When you're shopping, utilize low-contact shopping methods, and when you're at restaurants, space out. So that's still in place and we still have all of those preventative and precautions in place. So just reminding everyone over the next several weeks and over the next several months to continue to do those great habits that we've already been forming and to continue to keep your prevention precautions and patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everyone for joining us. Um, at this time, I'll open up if there's any questions. Hi, this is Jessica with KRCG13. I know you guys had mentioned um, patients kind of maybe booking multiple appointments with different health agencies or not showing up to appointments for their vaccine. Are you guys keeping track of how many doses you guys have wasted because of maybe patients not showing up at all? I know here at the health department, we haven't wasted any doses. We have, like I said, a list of thousands of residents who want the vaccine. So if we have someone not show up, we just keep calling until we get somebody to come. We have not wasted a single dose. Um, I don't know if you ever can't watch Jessica, but most of the other healthcare providers are shaking their head. I guess maybe we should ask, has anyone wasted a dose? No, no one is going to waste a dose of this precious resource. We will keep calling until we get someone who will come over and get a vaccine. Any other questions? Okay. Well, hearing that, again, I'd like to say thank you and um, hope everybody has a great rest of their weekend. Thanks.